Hey there, I'm Keenan Fry, and this is Lion Sight Media. Lion Sight Services for the Blind and Visually Impaired. Graphic of a lion's head in black and white on a gray background. All right, so uh, this uh, year is a big year. I launched Lion Sight Services, and uh, this is Lion Sight Media. This is kind of like the YouTube channel that's associated with the uh, TVI services I will be offering when I finally graduate from San Francisco State University. Um, and this is a uh, brief video where I'm going to demonstrate how I went about performing my um, final book project for SPED. Uh, 754, that's the Braille class, the first semester of Braille with uh, Pat Leader. It's a pretty infamous class. Anyone who goes through the TVI program goes through the Braille course. It's two semesters. Uh, the fall semester is dealing with um, UEB, Unified English Braille, and then the uh, spring semester deals with Nemeth, which is the math. So um, without too much introduction, I'm going to talk about the class and the project. So when you're in Pat Leader's class, you're assigned to do a final project, which is basically going to involve some kind of transcribing process. So what I did was a book in the box. I don't have the box with me, um, but I have the book with me, and I'm going to show you how I went through that. That's the main portion of this, uh, of this uh, video lecture. So we're going to talk about how it is I took Curious George Visits the Aquarium. This is a pretty fun little book. You know, 31 pages, not too big, not too hefty, and transcribed it into this monster right here. This thing is pretty hefty. So this is, um, for those of you that don't know, this is typical Braille paper, which is 11 by 11 and a half, ordered from uh, American Printing House for the Blind, API, I believe, um, or API is the name of the textbook we use, um, APH, excuse me, American Printing House. Too many acronyms, word soup. <laughs> so I'm going to show you how I went about making this, and it'll probably help you out not only in Pat Leader's class, that's if you're enrolled at San Francisco State, or if you're looking to enroll in San Francisco State and you're trying to figure out whether TVI is for you or not, but um, if you are a practicing TVI and you want to, you know, see how other people are hacking it, this is how I do things. So for starters, I'm um, just going to kind of stand here and show you the book. I'm going to kind of hold things up as best as I can, and then we're going to transfer over to the table, and you're going to get a top-down view. Um, as you can see, though, I'm going to stand back a little bit so you can see better. So you can see the book cover matches the insert. So every page that's in my book is a scanned transfer from the original, and it is of the original size. So this is the inside cover. Here is a Braille transcription. It's a little bit hard to see because you got some glare, and of course you're not going to see the Braille dots from here. So every time there's a page that carries over, it's not going to have one of these. So this is sort of like the cover, inside cover, which would be sort of like 1A, and then here we are at page 1B. So this page technically doesn't exist within the book, but it does exist in the Braille format. And the reason is because Braille takes up more space than print. So we're going to talk about some things that you can do to save some time in terms of templating out your Braille and in terms of planning it out because um, you're not going to be able to see it very clearly from here, but each paragraph that I made and transcribed I then sliced out using an X-Acto blade. And the reason I did it that way is because, um, and you'll see when we do the templating, uh, it saves time. If you make a mistake, instead of having to throw away the entire page, you slice out the part that you can save, and then you re-braille the paragraph that you messed up. So I'm not, you know, splitting a sentence in half, but if I messed up a paragraph and the rest of the page was okay, I'm just going to retype that paragraph on a new sheet slice it out and slap it in here. Now you may, you know, object to that and say, well, that's a little, you know, slap chop and you wouldn't be wrong, you know, 
that's a little slap chop there, Keenan. You know, you're going a little fast at it. And I, I, again, I agree that you wouldn't be wrong, but the problem is I'm not a professional transcriber. So you have to think about this from an objective standpoint. You know, there is best practices and then there is, did you meet the objective? So to me, best practices, you know, formatting correctly, having the page neatly laid out, no spelling errors, obviously, um, using the optimization for contractions, using the most optimized form of contracting the braille so that it takes up the least amount of space, things of that nature. That is best practices. However, in a practical education environment where you got to, you know, turn it around and get it done so you can hand it off, especially something this massive, a book this massive is the byproduct of a book this small. So how many times do you think they're going to read a book like this in a class? This is a 31 page book and they'll probably read one of these a week if they're in a first grade standard education course mainstream. They'll probably read one of these a week. If you've got 16, 17 weeks in a semester, you got to make 17 of these. So when you think about it from that perspective, you got to make 17 books. That's one a week. You cannot waste time. Now, granted, there are transcription uh, services and there's obviously a library of already transcribed books available to you. So you probably, the likelihood of you having to transcribe 17 books in a semester is, isn't realistic. But just approach it from that mindset. If you were to theoretically do that, how would you hack the transcription process to be as fast as possible? That's the approach I took to this. Now that doesn't mean that this is shoddy work. It just means that we're going to go through how you template things to get it done fast. Now realistically, you'll have uh, you know, uh, NLB, the National Library Services, and other groups who will be able to offer you uh, Braille books, obviously professional transcribers, and then of course, hopefully your district will have a library of already Braille materials that previous students who were visually impaired were using that you will have at your disposal. Hopefully you are not the first TVI to come across your district. If you are, you're going to be breaking a lot of new ground. And if you are new and you are the first TVI to your district, then this will be even more helpful for you. So um, that's enough about the introduction. I'm just going to throw a few other things out there. Uh, this channel is going to have a lot of other content. I'm going to be doing read-alouds and other stuff like that, um, literacy-based work, as well as just reviews of apps and uh, you know other forms of accessible technology. Um, and uh, yeah, if you want to contact me, you can reach out to me through the YouTube channel on the About page. There's going to be a uh, work-related email for the channel, so if you want to reach out to me um, and talk to me, uh, you can address me through that. Uh, through that channel. All right, that's enough of me rambling on. Let's actually look at the template now. Thanks a lot. Lion Sight. Regular updates on blind and visually impaired tutorials will be available for all kinds of topics. Thanks for watching.